Yeah, no, this this town is is uh, extraordinarily extraordinarily beautiful. It is right. I took a, I saw a, a live hedgehog in the wild. What? First time ever. A real life hedgehog. I I, I, I had gotten here and uh, woke up at like four a.m. Right, because because my clock's all messed up, and uh, I guess I caught him coming in from a you know long night of partying or something. Because it was five a.m. and this little hedgehog was going across the sidewalk. Going hard, yeah. Yeah, he went hard, hard in the paint. Yeah. Well, I, I know that, um, you know, a lot of times people that do these Comic Cons don't have the chance to see the town, but you've seen a bit of Harrogate so yeah. far. Yeah, after I had that encounter with my he hedgehog buddy, I went to uh, Valley Gardens and took a l nice little walk there. Uh, had, a, had a meal at a really nice Chinese restaurant down the road from the hotel. And then uh, I went to Hale's Bar. And didn't see the light of day for another like seven hours. Just I met this uh, really I met these cool uh, retired cops from Edinburgh. Oh wow! Willie and Raymond, and uh, yeah, they they got me day drunk. Shout a bunch out of, to Willie and Raymond. Bunch of yeah, shout out to a bunch of bunch of carlings. I guess we drank yeah. a bunch of carling. Um, but those guys are really nice and. Uh, and yeah, that's and, and I think I'll be back at Hales today. I don't know what you guys are doing and if you're Whoa. gonna be in town, but I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow someone's guitar and After uh, party? play one of my songs at the open mic at Hales Bar. Wow. So Hales Bar after this, maybe about seven o'clock. Yeah, the unofficial uh, after party. You've just unofficial, been unofficial, official, unofficial. Yeah. So that bar, by the way, we were told by Kev, uh, this guy right here, yeah, it's that like, it's haunted AF, apparently, right? Haunted AF? It's really, really super old. Why didn't you give me the heads up on that, Kev? Yeah. I, 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 I don't do ghosts, man. No, I'm just, it's, I'm, I'll am i be all right. There's like 500 Ghostbusters here today. I, I was going to say, we're looking at the Ghostbusters mobile yeah. right there, so I guess we'll be all right. Yeah, but yeah so Hales. So, so Is it we, really? Yeah. What's the story there? I don't know, Kev. 1600s coach house second most haunted place in harrogate nice. what's the first don't say our hotel oh the other that's oh my great gosh. okay well thanks. it's like it's like 250 years old or something yeah thanks right? for the nightmares bro like yeah. wow yeah. i'm still going to the hales after party though yeah so you mentioned over. your guitar yeah. yeah so tell us about your musical talents i mean they uh i i have this I don't know. I just write write songs to drive my wife crazy, and and she uh, humors me and listens to them. And and uh, I, but no, I I was gifted a guitar by Robert Rodriguez. I worked on a show called Matador in uh, 2013, and he had this um, Spanish guitar that was gifted to him by one of the Gypsy Kings. It's a limited edition 2002 Gypsy Kings Cordoba, and um, and he. Uh, my, I brought my guitar to work the very first day. Mine was just this old beat up guitar that I got from my grandpa. And, uh, and he saw it sitting on the back of my chair and he grabbed it and started playing music. And he's like, whose is this? I was like, it's mine. Hefe. He's like, yeah, it's great. I, I always bring mine. I forgot it today. And he's, and he, he's a kind of play. I was like, of course he was already playing it. Yeah. I wasn't going to tell him to stop. So, uh, but, but Robert is notorious for having his guitar at work, sitting in video village and just, kind of plucking out the score in his head for what's going to be, you know, uh, ideas for what might be. And uh, so when we, we kept playing together over time, and then he at one point said, you know what, I'm going to give you this guitar, his guitar. And I, and I was like, man, you don't have to do that. It's okay. But in my mind, I was like, God, I hope he gives me this guitar. It's <laughs> like, it's a beautiful, you know, one of 500 type deal. Um, so we wrapped the show at like 4 a.m. on the last day of the shoot, uh, he immediately gets in his rental car, which is a really cool, which is one of those Dodge Challengers that kind of look like my Ghost Rider car. You know, the new Dodge Challenger looks like the old 67 Charger. Um, but anyway, I remember that because it's kind of a weird little echo of, of my career. But the, uh, so he takes off in the car and he forgot to give me the guitar. And I was like, oh shoot, I guess he forgot. That's nah, okay. So I go home. He calls me at 6.15 a.m. He's like, Gabe. I was like, yeah, what's up, Evie? He's like, I forgot to give you that guitar, man. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, I, I hadn't noticed. But, uh, but no, he, uh, he's like, well, I have a busy day, but if you can come over to the Four Seasons on, you know, in Beverly Hills and Swarm Stang, just pick it up from the concierge. I was like, okay, great. So I went, walked up to the guy. 
I was like, Mr. Rodriguez left something for me. And he gives me this very knowing look. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he goes back into the closet, pulls out the guitar case, puts it on the, on the, on the counter. I open it. It's gorgeous, beautiful. It's like, I always tell this story, like it was like the Pulp Fiction briefcase. And I open it, it's just like glowing. And, uh, and, I, and I lock her back up, start walking away. And, and the guy goes, hey. And I turn around, like, I'm like, what? He's like, are you El Mariachi? And I said, yeah. And I just walked out the front door. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's not filled with guns or anything. It's just my guitar. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify. But, but he, he asked me, just always bring it to work like you do. And I was like, of course. And so for the last 10 years, I brought it to every job. And I like to play, uh, write songs in between takes. And Bella was really great on this one because she's a really wonderful singer-songwriter herself. And uh, so we got to kind of, you know, bounce some ideas off each other and play music. Very cool. Who are some of your musical inspirations? Uh, Marty Robbins, Johnny Cash, uh, uh, The Clash. Um, yeah, my top five are The Clash, Queen, Zeppelin, Johnny Cash. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. I really, everything. Those. Right now, I'm listening to a lot of Charlie Crockett. He's a guy from, uh, uh, he's from Texas. And he's actually the great, 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 great grandson of Davy Crockett, who's uh, yep. one of the heroes of the Alamo. You guys know where the Alamo is? You got to remember the oh, Alamo. Sweet. I was born yeah. in El Paso, by the way. Oh, so. nice. What's nice. up, Texas? What's up, Chico yes. Town? Well, here's a less serious question, but still with music. So if we're at, say, Hale's Bar, we're at an after party, and there's a karaoke jam session going on, yeah. what's your song? Oh, um, Kiss by Prince. <laughs> That's I like a crowd that pleaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, immigrant Song, Led Zeppelin. That's always a good one. Gets the crowd going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I, uh, and then I like crooners, you know, like a, you do some like Frank Sinatra or something. Very cool. But uh, anything, anything and everything. Uh, sometimes it's dealer's choice. I just tell them to throw some up on the screen and see what happens. Yeah, very good. That might be a preview of what we're going to see at the Hales Bar tonight. You never know. You Before go. we get to your actual amazing illustrious career, I have noticed, ladies and gentlemen, that you are wearing a Dusty Rhodes T-shirt. Did we just yeah. become best friends? Are you a wrestling fan as well? What? Uh, Give it up for the Dusty yeah. Rhodes representation. Yeah. Who was uh, an amazing man. Yeah. I, you know, when I was a kid, well, first of all, I love Dusty Rhodes. He's uh, my top five favorite wrestlers. Got to be Brett the Hitman Hart. And then, the, and then all Texans round out the rest of the, the list. Oh, yeah. And it's Dusty, Kerry Von Eric, Stone Cold Steve Austin, yep. and, uh, and Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. I knew so, you were going to go take her when you said Texas guys, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. So all, those, are, those are all my guys. And, uh, and, and Dusty actually went to Allen Elementary School, which was where my father went to elementary school in wow. East Austin, Texas. So they went to the same elementary school. Uh, Dusty is like a deity, you know, in Austin. It's like Dusty Rhodes, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, you know, handful of others. But the um, but yeah, so when I was in Calgary shooting The Last of Us, I became friends with Brett the Hitman Hart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had I the moment the day I got out of quarantine, I had my driver take me to the Hart house just to see it wow. and to see the dungeon from afar. And yep. um, I took some photos and, and then they asked me what I had done on my first day of freedom. I told him I went to the Hart House and they all looked at me like, oh, really? You're a wrestling fan? Is, is that, that's what you wanted to do with Only your free time? Only a true time? wrestling fan would know like the dungeon yeah. and how significant the Hart family is. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Stu Hart was, you know, he's a legend and trained a whole generation of wrestlers, including his 13 children. Yeah. And uh, so when I met Brett, he gave me his book. We talked for like five hours. He was wearing a Rey Mysterio shirt, which really was awesome because <laughs> Rey's like one of his favorite wrestlers. And, and he gave me his book. I read the book and was watching all the matches as I made my way through the book. So all of a sudden, I got really heavily back into it a couple of years ago. Uh, another friend of mine, Mark Henry, who was yep. who, uh, World's Strongest Man, he works for the All Elite Wrestling, which is a new company, which yep. is you know, kind of the underdog company. So I kind of support them yep. because I love Mark and uh, – and, uh, They've done a lot of really special stuff to honor Owen, uh, Brett's brother. And, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, I kind of got back into it. So I went to, I was shooting in Toronto. We were shooting FUBAR and they invited me. So I got to, went down to Buffalo and I got the whole experience, you know, be, backstage experience. Very and, cool. And that was really nice. 
But yeah, Dusty, man. Dusty's yeah. the guy. And Dusty's baby boy is doing very well. Son of a plumber, baby. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. What a Hard fun times. Time. And also, it's it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. Hello, Fred Flintstone, by the way. Yeah, but Get up for Fred Flintstone. I just, I was so distracted by the awesomeness of Fred Flintstone. But no, AEW is actually coming to London. We just interviewed some of the guys here. So oh, wow. it's a great yeah, time yeah, to be a yeah. wrestling fan. They, yeah, Mark is really excited. They're all very excited. They sold, I think, 60,000 tickets. Yeah. To, you know, that's a lot of folks. Wembley, yes. Wembley holds a lot of people. It does. I, I can't wait to go. I've never, I've never been. I would love to go to Wembley. Yes, and we will, we'll talk after the show if you ever want to hook up. That's that's my jam, wrestling. But speaking of impressive things, your career, my gosh, we have so many things to talk about. But I want to first ask, what is it like to be part of the Marvel Universe? I'm sure that's a big honor for you. Oh yeah, I'm, um, yeah, playing playing Robbie is gonna be go down as one of the greatest experiences of my life um uh they i get asked probably twice a day if i'm coming back which is uh really sweet but i was like you guys know i'm 40 years old right i mean <laughs> robbie robbie in the books is like 18 uh 20 maybe but and we aged him up for agents of shield so unless they do kind of some clever rewriting or maybe it's a version of robbie and in some other multiverse where he's just you know he's just uh a, a man of a certain age he's just he's just uh yeah but no no i love robbie will always love him um would be happy to do it again i said in an interview recently you know with the with the multiversal stuff maybe it's even possible but if they were ever to do it again kevin in the way that they line these things up it would be several years out so by that point you know i might be decrepit who knows but uh but yeah i i it, you know it was it was my introduction to a lot of VFX work. I did a lot of combat because that's kind of in my wheelhouse. I do a lot of physical things. Uh, got to learn precision driving from uh, Chuck Norris's son, Eric, Eric Norris, Whoa. and um, and Eddie Snake River Braun. There's a, there's a documentary on Disney Plus. I don't know if you have Disney, Disney Plus here, but um, it's called Stuntman. And it's about Eddie Snake River Braun, who, who is a great friend of mine, and he was my stunt driver for... Uh, for uh, uh, the Ghost Rider, and one day he's like, "Man, you're really kind of good at this stuff. I think you can you can probably handle a lot of this. Uh, meet me on Saturday, where I'm going to take you to, and meet me at the Rose Bowl." So I met him in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl in the parking lot, and he had the the uh, stunt car with him, and he just taught me how to do a J turn, how to fishtail a car, how to you know do donuts and all kinds of really fun stuff. And we, we were just uh, so I kind of got a lesson in precision driving from Eddie Braun. So, you know, you had all these experiences that you can't really, uh, um, you know, that, that you're going to keep with you forever and, and skills that you'll carry to, to job after job. So I love, I loved it. Loved every, every minute of it. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to ask one more question and then Kev is here. Everyone say hi to Kev. Hi, Kev. Hi, Kev. Thanks for the nightmares again. He has the microphone. So if you guys have a question for Gabriel, we're just going to ask you to raise your hand. The final question for me, uh, The Last of Us is, I mean, everyone's talking about it. It's an amazing show. Um, what is it like working on that and working with uh, Pedro Pascal, one of our favorites? It's great. It's great. It's, um, it's, it's wild, uh, the, 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 the popularity. I mean, the, we already yeah. knew the game was very popular, and it's, it's one of the greatest games ever made, and... and uh, one game of the year both times that uh yeah yeah both part one and part two one game of the year and um so i knew that people were going to be into it and then the show came out and people were really really into it yeah and uh but not only people who played the game and were familiar with it but but people who uh told their friends and told their friends to the point where each week we were picking up viewers by the millions yeah which uh, hbo was very happy with and um uh, it was it's, it was exciting working on it was to be in Calgary and I mean Calgary is it's so beautiful I mean some of this kind of area outside kind of reminds me of some of Calgary kind of in the spring but um, it's it's just gorgeous man so you, you got to be near the in the kind of in the nestled in the Rocky Mountains working with some of the 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 top people in, in, in their respective departments from all over the world. And then, of course, old, old, old Petey Pascal, <laughs> who is just... He seems uh, like such a good time. In he's great, man. He's super, he's super energetic. He's, he's got a, a really great spirit and a really kind of, I mean, ch uh, it's childlike, his sense of play, 
what you want. You want to, especially even if you're doing something heavily dramatic, you got to have some sense of, of, uh, of, of play and improvisation. And he certainly has all that. And, um, and keeps the energy between takes and, you know, dancing or listening to music or doing whatever he's doing. And, um, I just, I just thought that it was, it was really, really great to, to, to have that. And we kind of balanced each other out. I, I can, sometimes I tend to be a little, uh, just kind of serious in, in my, except when I'm playing my guitar and acting a clown. But in, if we're in a scene, you know, I, I, and that, and that, and, and sometimes it's to my detriment because I think you need to be a little bit more uh, pliable, you know. Uh, but sometimes I'm just kind of so focused that I I can become rigid. So it's great to have someone like Pedro or, or uh, who who can counterbalance that energy. If you need if you need to get out of your own body and your own head, you know, it's good to have someone like that. And he's he's really wonderful. I I, I love him and he's my brother. And I can't wait to get back to work and uh, and do season two. Yay. Very exciting. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Kay. Uh, you've already heard this from me earlier. Yes. But, um, so as I've discussed, um, The Last of Us was really important to me. I grew up with not much of a father figure. So having like Pedro and Bella have that connection, it really brought something home for me. Um, how does that make you feel that like people can really connect to the show on such a personal level? It's, it's, um, it's always really beautiful to see the emotion it brings out of people and the... Um, the memories that it helps to kind of build and and I uh, I yeah you and I talked about it I'm kind of the same way I, I my 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 mother was a single mother and uh, I I've sought those father figures you know because mine passed before I was born I've mentioned many many times but it, it was it's kind of shaped a lot of what I do and how I approach the world and how I um, make relationships and and mentors um, so. I can totally identify with that. And I found my, as we, as we discussed, you know, I've, I've found mine throughout the years, football coaches or, or, uh, teachers and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, people who become those father figures to you. Um, and, and for me, stories about fathers, daughters, fathers, and sons are always really important because it's something that I didn't experience. And so, um, uh, I love that element of this show and, and, um, and playing that, you know, the scene that I have in episode six is a revelation that I am myself am going to have to take on those duties, you know, and um, and it's um, it was really important to me to that scene, just the idea, you know, because I, I don't yet have children. We're kind of working on it, but that'd be, you know, I, 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 I it's always been something of a of a of a dream to have that experience and to be able to play. It was really, really, really up. Uh, impactful but uh but yeah no I, it makes me feel very happy that people can find uh, you know they can you know see that bond and and uh, identify with the bond thank you beautiful question beautiful Kay and i almost well. got in big trouble last year a couple of years ago she did an interview where i i i let slip the time frame of the show that it wasn't going to be in 2013 but 2003 and then all of a sudden she we we posted it and it Within minutes, everybody is like, oh, the show is going to be set in 2003. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I found her on the internet. I was like, maybe we take that down just for, just until this blows over. But it was too late. It was up for like five minutes and everybody, yeah. That's a lot of pressure, right? Is it, is it a lot of secrecy involved with a show of this magnitude? Like to not oh, give yeah. anything away? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, right now I have a whole trove of secrets that Craig gave me about season two that are just burning holes in my brain. You I mean, can tell us if you want. Oh, I mean, just, just between us, right guys? I just, <laughs> yeah. We don't want to get you in trouble now. <laughs> no, I just, I, you know, but you get used to it. You just kind of uh, keep your head down and do the work and not really, you know, try not to uh, spoil anything. Cause no one, no one wants to know what's happening. You know, just, you know, we all want to enjoy it. So, but yeah. Tell us at the Hales bar later. Okay, I'll at, tell the, you. at the unofficial oh, after party, we'll get all the secrets. I'll put, even... I'll put subliminal messages into the, into the lyrics of the Perfect. song. Perfect. So mysterious. We have a question here in the middle from this lovely gentleman. How do you feel when you make your movies? Well, sometimes, uh, sometimes I feel uh, nervous and, and, and scared, but that's the best feeling you could have. Because if you feel confident and sure about what you're going to do, 
then it's not going to feel real because in real life, we don't know what we're going to do. We don't know what we're going to say until the moment arrives and we react to the things around us. So, um, so I, to be nervous and to be scared is a good thing. And it's important in life to, to, to go towards the things you're afraid of, you know, within reason, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to run into traffic or anything like that, but, but you certainly want to, uh, encounter the things that you fear so that you can be brave because you're only brave when you you know you're afraid but you act anyway so i think uh sometimes nervous sometimes sometimes it's super fun you know sometimes i get to do a lot of fighting and action and things like that which are always really fun drive cars that i don't own and uh and <laughs> his eyes got really big yeah you know drive really <laughs> fast cars and and uh and have guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger pretend to be hurt by, by me when I punch them in the face. And um, so there's a lot of emotions, but um, I, th uh, I think that uh, fun is probably, you know, the, the best emotion that you feel. Yeah. Great question, buddy. What's your Thank name, you buddy? So much. What's your name? Jackson. Nice to meet you. Give it up for Jackson, everybody. Great question. We have another question over here on the left. Hi there. Hi, all right. Um, so yesterday you said that you played both of the Last of Us games. Yes. What was your favorite part about them? Uh, in part one, it was the high school, the gym. Yeah, just because of the the lighting in the in the in the scene, I thought it was really beautiful. Um, and and of course, terrifying when the big monster comes out and you got to fight him. Um, I wish I wasn't so conservative with my uh, my ammunition. I, I I I'm always looking in looking in drawers for scissors, because I'm a big shivs guy. I'm all about shivs. I wanna I wanna feel their breath when I when I wow. when I when I end the clicker. You know. You're dark. Yeah yeah. I wanna. <laughs> it's got feel. real weird and dark all of a sudden. I wanna I wanna hear. Wow. No 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 no. But I, I mostly it's just me being really really. Uh, kind of cheap with all my uh, my bullets and, and my gas tanks and things. If, had I known that there would be other gas tanks, I would have just flamethrowered this thing, but I didn't. So it was really hard, but it was beautiful. And then uh, in the second game, uh, it's all the guitar playing stuff. Yeah. It's just the fact that I could strum the touchpad on the controller. And not only strum, but actually, if you if you can get the intervals right, you can actually finger pick. And uh, so I was playing my own songs on on the game, which is kind of neat, you know. And um, so, yeah, those are my favorite parts. Thank you. Great question. We've got another one here in the middle. Hi there. You mentioned your um, top five wrestlers. That's um, right. What's your favorite wrestling feud of all time? Ooh, Ooh good, good, good one, good one, good one. Uh, good question, Jack. It's my buddy, Jack. Hi, Jack. Uh, the Midnights versus the Rock and Roll Express. Um, I think uh, I probably, I mean, Brett and Sean, you know, and uh, even though it wasn't really that long of a feud, the the Brett and, and Stone Cold stuff, because it culminates in, in WrestleMania 13, which is just incredible, you know. And, and, and Brett told me that story when I met him we sat at the table and he explained how Steve had never gotten color in a match. Getting color means to cut yourself and to bleed. And, uh, and actually there was a ban on it. You know, Vince didn't want anybody getting blood because he was making a show for kids. Right. But they were doing a show. They were doing a, uh, the finish was going to be a submission. It was going to be a submission match and stone cold had no real submission holds. So Brett was like, what kind of submissions do you have? He's like, really, I don't have any. He's like, okay, well, the finish is I'm going to put you in the sharpshooter and you're, gonna, you're not going to quit, but no one's going to know that if you don't bleed. Uh, you know, because in the, in, the, in the top, in the back seats, no one's going to know that you're going to see the expression on your face. So the only way that they'll know that you're truly in pain is if you're bleeding, right? So he's like, are you cool with getting color? And Steve was like, oh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah, I can do that, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's ever done it before? He's like, no, 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 I've never done it, no, no, no. He's like, well, you're, you never let another guy cut you. But if you've never done it before, I'll do it if you let me, if you trust me. And Steve's like, oh, shit, hell yeah, yeah, go ahead. And then uh, so Brett says, he's like, well, now, if I get the blade out, we can't go back. If the blade comes out, we're going to do it. And he's like, okay, okay. So then, so then I'm sitting there in front of Brett Hart, 
and he takes a sugar packet and he folds it into into quarters, into a, like a, a fourth of what it is. And he's like, so when you do is you break the you break the razor blade into about this size, and he folds up the sugar packet into the size of the razor blade. And then you take wrist tape and you tape up the whole razor blade, and you only leave a tiny little bit of the sharp end exposed. And then most people tape it to their wrist tape, but me, I put it in my gums. So the whole match, WrestleMania 13, he had the blade in his gums. And, uh, and he ends up hitting Steve right in front of the announce desk. Vince is right there, like right there. And, and, and you're not supposed to bleed. No one's supposed to get cut, you know. And, and, and Brett goes down, spits the blade out, grabs it, puts Steve in the headlock. And then Steve is like, they're right in front of Vince. Steve's like, no, don't do it, don't do it. He's like, too late. So he punches him a couple times and then kind of digs it in and then digs it into his head. They go for the finish. Brett gets him into the sharpshooter, as we all know, in WrestleMania 13. Steve's pushing up off the mat. He's just like, ah, ah. He, he kicks out of it almost, but then Brett reestablishes his hold and it just cranks it. And then Steve pushes and pushes and pushes. And then obviously he finally passes out. And to hear that story from Brett's mouth, just like, I mean, I'm getting hair standing up on it in the back of my neck just now. Uh, because that obviously is historic. It's the, it's the historic double turn. You know, Steve became a good guy in that moment. Brett became a bad guy for the first time since the 80s. And, uh, and the rest is history. I mean, it's WrestleMania 13. So, um, so yeah, a lot of different feuds. But that, that right there is kind of, I mean, I'll always have that memory to hear it from Brett. He also told me the story of the screw job. And he was using like uh, peanuts to show me where everybody was in the locker room. He's like, here I am coming out of the, coming out of the shower and then Owen and Davey and Jim were sitting here. And then Vince comes in with, with Sergeant Slaughter and you know, he's just showing me. And then Sean's over here in the corner telling me he had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And then, uh, so it was just, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cool. Yes. One of the best matches of all time, by the way, round of applause for that stone cold Steve Austin impression. That was spot. Oh, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was spot on. You were getting to, I was like, this is really good. We have time for one more question, guys. We have a question. Oh, we have this lovely lady here on the right. So away from the seriousness of The Last of Us, what was your funniest moment on set? Um, the funniest moment? Oh, okay. So when we were doing the, um, there's a lot of funny moments. But uh, I remember, I remember I saved Petey's life because we were doing the scene where, um, where we hug each other. Where I, I'm up on the scaffold and I come down and he sees me, gets off the horse, Tommy. And then he comes and we hug each other. There was there was a there was a take where about two meters from me, he starts to slip. And and I mean, it's like a Michael Jackson kind of sliding across the stage type slip. I mean, he he's walking towards me. He's got the, all the emotion in his eyes. And all of a sudden you just see him go and he's sliding and literally slides into my embrace. I mean, if I hadn't clutched him and held him in that moment, I mean, he would have ate shit. And so so I just I remember we did the whole scene. We're all emotional. And then we hug, and then they're like, cut. And then he goes, he's like, oh, my God, I almost died. And I was like, I was like, I know, I got you, brother. Don't worry about it. And so, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the only one that really comes to mind now. But there was probably hundreds of, uh, you know, fun times. Yes. But yeah. Well, speaking of fun times, you guys have to remember that Gabriel is here for autographs and photos today. But what are you looking forward to as a final question? What are you looking forward to after Harrogate, either professionally, personally, after you leave here, what's uh, going on? You know, there was some good news today. Apparently, the the uh, studios and the directors uh, reached a deal, I think. Oh, so maybe that bodes well for the writers and, and uh, for us as the Screen Actors Guild. So once we get all that settled, we... Uh, we have, I have a film that I'm shooting in Ireland in October with uh, Lawrence Fishburne and Emma Roberts. And, um, and then uh, after that is a show that, or a, a movie I'm supposed to shoot in Antarctica. Oh, wow. So, which I think it's going to be the, the third narrative feature ever to be shot in Antarctica. So that'll be cool. And once that happens, I will have been to all seven continents on the planet. Very cool. And so I'm looking forward to that. Why are we filming in such cold places? Calgary. I know, man. I'm Jeez, not, man. And I'm tropical by and you're nature. You're from Texas, right? So. Oh, shit. I do, not, I do not fare well in cold weather. I'll tell one last little story before I yes, go. Yes, please. So, so I get to Calgary for, to shoot that Jackson episode. And, uh, and so I, I get to work and it's fucking cold. Super cold. And I, sorry, earmuffs all you little ones. <laughs> 
and then <laughs> she fell on her face. Okay, so anyway, so I, I go into I go into my trailer, put my costume on, and I have my you know my Sherpa jacket, and and I have some like waffle thermals, and you know I feel like I'm I'm pretty well layered up, and I'm saying like, ah, all right, and but then I look in my in my closet, and they have these this vest, these these thermal pants, and these socks that have battery packs in them, and I was like, what the hell is this? And 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 then. And if I put it on, it was going to be kind of bulky, and I guess it might be my vanity. And I was like, I don't want to wear all this, and then just look, just kind of look kind of too, too, you know, kind of uh, bulky. And I was like, eh, I'm good with the waffles. I'll just wear the waffle thermals. So I walk out to set, and I'm there for like five minutes, and and the and I and all of a sudden I realize it's negative 19 Celsius. I mean, oh it's it's extremely cold. And I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, why did I not put that stuff on? And I went up to my dresser, Steve. I was like, Steve, he's like, don't worry, I got it. I was like, oh, thank God. This is somebody who actually knows how to prepare for this kind of stuff. So they tucked me away into one of those, we have these like expedition tent things with like 20 space heaters around. I put on my whole deal. I'm like half machine now. I'm like flashbacks to Terminator. I'm like, here we are. And then, uh, and then I literally set, um, it only took me one time running out of batteries. Like, okay, now I have to set this to my to to a timer on my phone just to let me know every about two hours that i need to charge all these batteries so we had a whole system after that because i was never without full-on heat coil you know that's how we do it so yeah antarctica i'm i guess i'm prepared now yeah, to, to not uh you know to not think that i'm tougher than i am because yeah. i'm not Canada's nuts. There's there's a place actually called None of It, as if I'm having none of it, yeah. uh, where your the liquid on your eyeballs will freeze. You have to wear goggles. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we were wearing masks and stuff because we had the uh, you know we were still under COVID protocols. We we're shooting in 2021, and um, and the 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 condensation from the mask would go up into your eyes, you know, because you're breathing, and then you're just complete all icicles all over your eyelashes, and my little scruffy little you know goat like <laughs> beard that I have. Just all icicles. It was intense. But yeah, I love you guys. Thank you very much. Yes. I appreciate you. We want to say thank you so much. You can say any final words you want to the fans here. I know they're so excited no, to meet just, you today. I love you. I love you. Thank you. It's good to be up here with the Northerners. Yeah. And uh, my great grandma's from Edinburgh. So as I said, so I uh, feel like kind of at home and a bit just up here. Yeah. But, uh, but thank you for being so kind to me while I've been here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. I'm usually kind of wandering around. You'll probably see me. Yes. Uh, Could be in the crowd again for all we know. Yeah, I, yeah. I might go take a seat. And who's who's coming up next? Let's see what. Yeah, wanna, let's just hang let's out. They have to say Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just okay. stay for no, that. No, really, one. love you guys. Thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Please show your appreciation for Gabriel Luna.